Danielle, you and John Lukomnik wrote a very interesting article, Why Does Portfolio turn, uh, Turnover Often Exceed Expectations for the Journal? Uh, so this is a conversation about that article. Uh, what motivated you and John to do this study? Well, John and I, I guess independently, have both written about uh, short-termism. John's researched it in various forms through his role at IRC, um, but also he's written books and articles, and it's definitely been a pet subject of his over the years. Uh, and likewise, um, I've written some articles and done some research in this area. So I think quite a lot has been written um, more broadly as well. So what we wanted to do was join forces and see how we could take a fresh look at the subject. Um, right, and um, that's, that's what you did in the article. Could you just go on? And what was fresh about what you did in the article in your study? Right, well, what we really wanted to do, we realized at Mercer we had this huge database that we could use. So it was a, a way of crunching the numbers and, and actually looking specifically. Our hy hypothesis that we wanted to test was, is there a difference between uh, the turnover that active managers, long only active managers, uh, say they have and, and what they actually, um, what, what their turnover actually is. So we're comparing, I guess, marketing sales pitch, uh, you know, we turn over, we're a long-term investor, we turn over our fund only 20% a year. We're, we were testing that, you know, with the actual p turnover uh, data because we have all that data in our database. Um, so that was what was new about it. But we also wanted to segregate the data by style so we could look at, you know, gr value growth managers, uh, small cap, large cap, we actually looked at SRI, non-SRI funds, uh, and then we could also segregate by different regions and just see if there was a bit of a tendency for managers of certain types of strategies and in certain types of regions to be shorter term in their focus than, than in others. And what did you find? Well, uh, we found um, that of our sample, which was around 900 uh, strategies, that 65% of those did actually exceed uh, their turnover projections, if you like. So there was a gap between what they said they did and what they actually did. Uh, and on, on average, that gap was around 20%. So in other words, they were, they were trading 20% more of their portfolio than they, they claimed to. So that was, that was one finding, which I think was quite, uh, quite, uh, quite important. I should emphasize again that this was long-only managers. So we, didn't, we took out hedge funds and uh, and, and any other long short uh, strategies that might impact on that. Uh, we also found um, in terms of style that uh, growth managers had a much higher turnover rate on average than value managers, which is what you would expect, um, where growth managers may be more prone to momentum trading than value managers. We, uh, we found that small cap managers had a higher turnover uh, than large cap. And again, you would expect that because there is more volatility um, in the index construction itself. You know, you get more of this creative destruction um, going on in, in the small cap market. And also the sample period itself. I should mention that the sample period did include part of the credit crisis um, uh, volatility. So, of course, you know, the, the small cap in particular would have picked up on that. Uh, I think a smaller number of these managers, you actually put them on the couch and you had a conversation with them about why do you do what you do, right? What, what, what came out of those conversations? Yeah, that was really interesting. We, um, we interviewed a bunch of managers. We, we selected them to get a fairly representative sample, some that were very, very short term in their focus and others that were very long term in their focus. And actually, um, some, some common themes came out. You know, effectively, we didn't uh, scrutinize their particular strategy as such. We just asked them more broadly, what do you think about um, investment horizons and, and is there a problem with short-termism in the market? And they pretty much all um, felt the short-term uh, tendencies were, uh, were prevalent. Um, there were a number of explanations, but, you know, some of them felt that it was because of the way they're incentivized uh, to behave that they're, they're on relatively short-term mandates. Of course, we've, uh, we've heard that argument many times before, but many gave examples where they really were on three-year mandates and they felt that they had to 
uh, sing for their supper every quarter to, that, to, to ensure that they were outperforming the benchmark. And, and that, that, uh, that creates a sort of short-term behavioural pull. Um, of course, they also felt that the credit crisis itself led to more volatility. Some of them even pointed to short-term traders like day traders and hedge funds creating a more volatile market and forcing, forcing them to also become more short-term. And so, so there are a number of, a number of things going on, but um, incentives um, seem to come through as a, as, as a very uh, strong driver. So, so obviously the next question then is uh, what, what message or what lessons are here for the, uh, the asset owners uh, whose money is being managed? Uh, should they change their behavior? Should they change the incentives? Yeah, you know, I, I think we need to have a, a close look at uh, the way we pay um, active managers and the way, and the way uh, not only um, the, the flat um, performance, not only the flat fees, but the performance fees and the kickers as well, and over what time period we review, um, we review those uh, structures. Um, so that's certainly one, one particular um, area that needs attention. But I, I would say the biggest insight from the study for asset owners is more um, around the, the fact that this needs to be monitored. You can't just assume that if you invest in a long-only um, active manager and they say they're a long-term investor that they are. Um, and, and it needs to be built into the way you evaluate managers over time. You need to actually measure how much they are turning over the portfolio. If it deviates significantly from, from uh, what they claim to do, find out why, understand why. There might be a good reason, but uh, you know, it, it's something that needs to be actively managed. It's, it's not. Um, it get, and the reason, the conclusion that John and I came to in the article is that it could actually um, be a symptom of, of something deeper uh, going on or going wrong uh, with, with the strategy and the way it's being managed. So in itself, in isolation, of course, you wouldn't uh, change a mandate based on turnover, but it could be a, another indicator or wa early warning sign uh, that, that the strategy is not going in the right direction. So, so final, final question, when you say you know, there's something more fundamental going on here, and, and I wonder um, if you've reflected on uh, this idea of traditional active management where you basically have a, a group of active managers trading in the market against each other, all trying to produce alpha, when we know, in fact, uh, from a universal owner concept, it's a zero-sum game. Um, maybe the game shouldn't be played at all. Yeah, I mean, this is part, maybe phase two, three, and four of the short-termism <laughs> research needs to focus on well, as, as asset allocation exposures shift again into yeah. more unlisted, more alternatives, or if we don't right. use that coin of phrase, but as, as we shift away from, say, equities, um, what, what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of uh, investment horizons? And are there certain asset classes that actually are naturally longer term, like infrastructure, like real estate, even private equity, although that's sort of a three to five year horizon mm -hmm. at best. So. You know, I, I think in in, um, in in trying to uh, to to change the way the listed equity market behaves could be a very difficult thing, and maybe passive passive management with a, an engagement um, overlay approach might be the best a, a long term universal owner could do. Thank you for this uh, for this this conversation. Um, when we touch base next on this topic, I, I think that's a direction where we may have to look is just to do less of the old kind of investing and more of the new kind of investing. Thank you very much.